All right, we are back again to do part three of common methods that are used with arrays. So once again, uh, if this is the first video you're watching, there are two other ones that come ahead of it. Um, but you know, you, I guess there's no particular order that you have to watch in. Uh, we are just going to be continuing working with this menu system that we have. And today we're going to just add a few other things. So the first one we're going to add today is we're going to be uh, looking for the lowest value in the in the array. Right now, this could also be the highest value in the array, but it actually doesn't matter. Uh, this is essentially the same algorithm. So we're going to say find the lowest value in the array. Okay. And then we'll go here, else if choice is equal to eight. Okay, well, I'll just call it find lowest. All right, and actually what we should do is we should return it. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to just print it out. So we'll say system of print line, find the lowest number, and just tell us what it is. And it might be nice actually to do something like this. Um, lowest number space. All right, something like that. Okay, so let's get to it. So we're going to go public static void, actually not void, sorry, int find lowest int numbers. Okay, and so what we're going to do here is look for the lowest number. The way we do it is we say int lowest is equal to numbers at zero. So we're assuming that the first number in the array is the lowest number. All right, then what we're going to do is we're going to scan the, the array for, we're going to actually look for another lower number. If we find one, then we make that the lowest number. All right, so what we can do is we can say for int x is equal to one, x is less than numbers dot length, and x plus plus. All right, and from there, what we can do is we can just say if numbers at x is equal to or is less than the lowest, then the lowest is equal to numbers at x. That's pretty much it. All right. Now, the one one thing that people commonly ask is they'll say like, "Well, why did you start at one here?" Well, the reason why we started at one is because the first number in the array is already counted because we set the lowest to be that number, and so we don't have to look at it again. We can just start at the at the next number after that. Okay. And then following all this, what we're going to do is just return lowest, right, and that should be it. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so we're going to populate the array sequentially. Uh, we will display it. Okay, and in this case, there's just 10 numbers. Uh, this is actually supposed to be 100, but it was uh, set to 10 previously for one of our um, one of our other methods. Okay, I'll change it back to 100 later. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. Find the uh, let's shuffle it. So let's go four, and display it again, and then find the lowest number, eight. Okay, the lowest number is one. Let's go a random array. So, okay, so there's a random, looks like the lowest number is 14. So we are gonna go find the lowest number and 14. Okay, and if you wanted to do the highest number, all you'd have to do is just go and uh, change this into, um, change this from a less than to a greater than. And it, I guess technically you don't have to change the variable name, but it'd probably be better to call it highest or something like that. All right, so after that, what we're going to do is we're going to look for a certain number and count how many times a number occurs, All right? So let's go so small print line, count how many instances of a number are in the array. Okay, so we're going to say else if choice is equal to nine. Okay, now this one we're going to have to be, uh, we have to do this, a similar thing to this. 
right? Where what we need to do is we have to actually go and say, okay, like what, ask the user, and in this case, what number you would like to look for. Now, this isn't always the case that you would ask the user. Sometimes, and probably more often, this would just be something that the coder would use. So, like, you'd be the coder would be looking for a specific number, and then you wouldn't have to ask the user for it. But in this case, I'm not looking for any particular number, so I will ask the user for it. All right, and so uh, let's call this count occurrences. All right. And let's go write this write this method. public static int count occurrences and of this target in this array. Okay, and the way we do it is we start off by setting a counter. So we say int counter is equal to zero. Then we're going to say we're going to create a for loop for int x is equal to zero. X is less than the numbers dot length and x plus plus. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say if numbers at x is equal to the target so the thing if we find the thing that we're looking for all we do is say counter plus plus so we just add one to the counter and because it's just one line for everything i actually don't need these scope brackets and at the end you just return the counter all right and that should be it okay let's go test this out so we're going to say uh, let's populate the array sequentially, and we should be able to find, actually, before we do this, let's change this back to 100. Okay, so I'll populate the array sequentially, and if we count the number of instances of something in the list, it should only be one. So let's look for 54. Okay, it says the item is in index one. That's just a leftover um, message, so it is actually working correct, but uh, we we should actually do something like this. Appears. All right, so target plus appears this number of times. Okay, so just something like that to make it look a bit nicer. Let's give it a shot. Um, sequential display. Look for, I don't know, 44. 44 appears one of times, one of times. <laughs> Just one time. And things like this, details like that just bother me sometimes, but okay. Now here's the, here's where we really have to check it. So we're gonna check uh, randomly. We're going to display the array. Okay, so now the number one I see appears three times here. All right, so it appears once there, once there, once there. Um, I don't see any others. So let's go and count how many times a one appears. Okay, it appears three times. Let's go look for um, something that doesn't appear, like 1,001. 1, okay, zero times. And let's look for something else that, like I don't know how many times it appears, but we'll see what it says. Let's look for something like 96. I see it appears one time here. Right, right there. So let's go take a look for it and see if it appears more than that. Two times. Okay, so there's a 96 here. There should be a 96 somewhere else. And let's have a race. See who can find it first. If it, Yeah, it's right there. Okay, great. Did you win the race? All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to ask the user for two different numbers, and then we're just going to do basically a find and replace. All right, so what we'll do is a small print line, 10, find and replace a number. Okay. So we're going to find and replace a number, and this will be option 10. Now, uh, option 10, 
or choice 10 is going to be very similar in its kind of structure here where we have to do we have to create a target so we're going to say find target right and then we're going to have to make a replace target right so would you like what number would you like to look for what number would you like to replace it with all right so something like that and then we will just call the method we'll say find and replace numbers all right so let's go public static void find and replace int array numbers okay um, oh <laughs> we can't just take the numbers we also need the targets so we have to say um, numbers find target replace target Right, so of course we have to tell the method what the numbers are that we are going to find and replace. So we're going to say int uh, find target. Now you don't have to name the variables the same thing, uh, but I I like to it just causes less, less less confusion here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our for loop and we're just going to say if the numbers at x is equal to the find target, so the number we're looking for, then numbers at x is equal to the replace target. That's pretty much it. Let's give this one a try. All right, so what we'll do is we will uh, populate the array randomly and display it. Okay, and I want to, now, technically, there's no limit, so I could choose a number that's uh, kind of wacky, and I'm going to choose negative one um, because I want to be able to find, like, I want it to stand out, so I don't have to look too hard for it. All right, so I see there's a there's a pair of 82s here, and so we can actually, like, there's an 82 and an 82. So let's go see if we can, if that'll work. So find and replace a number. Okay, so I'm looking for 82, and I want to replace it with negative one. Okay, so if I look at the the list up there's see this is why it's good to make it stand out so there's a negative one a negative one negative one and if i go back up yep there sure enough there was an 82 there as well okay so that looks like it works let's try it one more time just what if it doesn't find the number so let's go finding negative two and replace it with a six all right so does it do anything no doesn't look like it, it looks like it's fine Okay, now the last thing we want to do is I want to find the section of the array. That, okay, so what I want to do is find the section of the array that has the 10 largest consecutive numbers. Okay, so find the largest sum of 10 consecutive numbers. All right, so what we want to do is say, okay, which 10 numbers in a row would have the greatest sum? Now, the problem with, uh, with something like this is that it's really hard to test this. All right, now you can test it with a sequential list, right? So for instance, if I did this with sequential list, obviously the, sum, the 10 numbers with the greatest sum would be the last 10. But if I have a random list, so something like this, well, that's really hard, right? Because like, well, what about this one? This looks pretty good because it's got some high numbers, but it also has like an 8 and a 32, and maybe there's a, a higher set somewhere else, right? So now the problem is what you'd have to do is you'd have to find like these 10, the sum, and then the sum of these 10, and the sum of these 10 and the sum of these 10, and on and on until to check all the different sums of 10s, right? So that's actually kind of troublesome, and it makes testing kind of difficult. But what we can do is we can actually go and look kind of intuitively to see if it makes sense, 
Now, given that the numbers range from 1 to 100, the average number is about 50, right? So if we're finding the sum of 10, right, any 10, then on average, the sum should be 500, so 50 times 10, right? Because some are going to be lower than 50, some are going to be higher than 50. So what would you expect then? right, for the sum to actually be? Like, would you expect it to be like 900, for instance? Probably not, right? Because 900 would mean that, like, you'd have, like, 10 in a row that were all over 90, or about between 80 and, 9, 80 and 100. So it's unlikely it'll be there. More likely, it will probably be something around 600 or so. So, like, like something that's just a bit above average, but not quite uh, at the average, right? So let's take a look and... Uh, We'll see if my guess is about right. I think it should be about 600 to about 650. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. So else if choice is equal to 11, we're going to say um, it's a small print line, largest, we'll call it largest 10. Okay, and we should probably put a little message there. Largest 10 numbers sum. Okay, that's pretty terrible, but it'll do. I know what it means. Okay, so public static int largest 10 int array numbers. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to actually use a nested loop. And the first loop we're going to use is for int start is equal to zero. Start is less than um, numbers.length minus 10 and start plus plus. So the start variable is going to be keeping track of where we're going to start counting our group of 10. So start counts at 0 here, uh, starts at 0, and then it's going to go to 1, and then 2, and then 3, and so on and so forth. All right. The reason why it goes to minus 10 is because we're going to be counting from there, and we're going to move 10 forward. Right, so if obviously we can't go to the very end, otherwise you can go out of bounds if we try and move 10 forward from that starting point. And of course, the start is going to move up by one every time. Now, we could technically just brute force this, right? We could do something like this um, int sum is equal to zero. And we could say something like this sum is equal to numbers at start plus numbers at start plus one, and so dot dot dot. So something like that. So that was a weird autofill. Okay, um, but I don't want to brute force this, mainly because it's going to be a big pain, right? And so what we can, what you notice that is that we always have start, and if we put this here, start plus zero, the next one would be start plus one, and then start plus two, and start plus three. And so whatever we're adding there is we are going to is is a number that's going to go from basically zero to uh, ten, right? So or zero to nine. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put this into another loop for int x is equal to 0, x is less than 10, x plus plus. All right, and what we'll do is we'll say sum is equal to sum plus numbers at start plus x. Okay, like that. Um, there's actually a, a nicer way. I don't really like to write sum equals sum plus. I like usually plus equals. So sum plus equals numbers at start at x, plus start plus x. So at first it's going to go 0, and then 0, and then 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, and so on and so forth. So it'll just keep adding. And then when start is 1, then it'll be 1 plus 0, then 1 plus 1, 1 plus 2, 1 plus 3, and so on and so forth. All right, so this is actually calculating the sum. All right, so calculating the sum of this section. Now, the problem is 
that every time we jump to a new starting point, the sum is going to be left over from the previous sum. So what we have to do is we have to set reset the sum back to be zero. Um, otherwise, it'll be reset and then it won't it won't actually uh, count it there, or it'll always count the last ten basically because the sum will just be getting bigger and bigger all the time. We also need to know what the largest value was. Okay, and we'll just set it to be zero to start. Um, and then what we'll say is if the sum is greater than the largest, then the largest is equal to the sum. All right, now I'm going to put some test code in here um, just to help me make sure this works. All right, and I'm going to say int starting index is equal to zero. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if the sum is ever largest, bigger than the lar or sum is larger than the largest, then the largest is now equal to the sum, and the starting index is equal to the start. And that's what that's going to do is it's going to tell me where this where this uh, group of ten actually begins, and so I'll be able to find it when I'm testing it out later. All right, so that looks like it should work. Then we go back to zero, we move up to the next starting point, reset our sum, calculate another 10, check the if the sum is greater than the largest, and so on and so forth. Okay, now put in some more test code here. System will print line, starting point at, okay, and We'll say starting index, and then we're just going to return the uh, largest. Okay, and that actually looks like it should be complete. Let's take a look and see if it actually works. So we're going to go with a random, well, first of all, let's go sequential and see if that works, because we should get the last 10 items. All right, so what we have is the starting point is 89, and the largest sum is 945. So the question then is, is that actually the correct answer? Well, let's take a look. So obviously, if it's a sequential array, this is the um, this is the the last or the last row, and it's going to be the largest row of 10. So what we're going to do is uh, just say it like, what's the sum of this row? Okay, so what we have is we have the first item is 100, the last item is 91, so 191. All right, and now 92 plus 99 is also 191. 98 and 93 is also 191. 94 and 97 is 191, and 95, 96. And there's actually five groups of them, and so we can just say times five. Okay, and so the answer should be 955. Well, what did we get? We got 945. We're 10 short, right? And the reason why is because if you look, it says that this occurred at index 89, but it actually should have occurred at index 90. And so what the problem is, is that here, we actually should have gone to less than or equals to. We just didn't go far enough. All right, so let's go take a look. Uh, so we'll populate the array sequentially. We're going to find the largest 10 consecutive numbers, and it says now its starting point is at 90. We did not go out of bounds, which is which is good. And 955 is our answer, and there we go. Okay, now here's where it gets a little tricky for testing. We're going to go to uh, check the random array, so populate randomly. Okay, now for something like this, this is really tricky because, like, well, you know, it could really be anywhere. So let's check it out. Okay, so here it says that the starting point is at 90 and the sum is 638. Now remember earlier I said that I would expect the sum to be between 600 and 650 and that actually worked out to be correct. Okay, but it said its starting point is at uh, spot 90, which is this. So again, it said it's the last row. Um, is that actually true? Right now, this could be just a fluke, right? So we got 94. See, like this row actually looks pretty good, the first row, right? So is this one? Now this also looks good because you got 87, 92, 90, 73, 74. You know, we got some big numbers here. This one looks pretty good as well. So 
you know, let's uh, let's actually just take a quick look and run a test on this. Okay, so we got 62 plus 82 plus 44 plus 59 plus 41 plus 74 plus 24 plus 73 plus 92 plus 87, 638. Okay, that is correct. Okay, the top row, 94 plus 45 plus 58 plus 95 plus 80 plus 49 plus 90 plus 90 plus 7 plus 29, 637. Oh, ho, ho. that is actually really close. Um, by the way, uh, I used to work at a bank, and so that's why I can that's why I can uh, crunch numbers on the number pad like that. Okay, anyways, that, so yeah, the top row actually looked like a very strong candidate, but the bottom row is actually just one more. All right, let's take a look and just shuffle the array and redisplay it now. And let's see, now everything's kind of out of place. Let's see if we can find um, a 10 consecutive numbers again. Right, so now it says that starting point's at 89 and the sum is 655. So it's saying it's this section here, right? That actually looks pretty good again, but um, it worries me that it's always towards the end. So let's see if we can maybe shuffle it and try this again and see if we can get it somewhere else. So starting point 72 is pretty good. Um, shuffle it. Okay, starting point 57. Yeah, let's take a look at 57. All right, so starting point 57. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is 57. And so that's the section it's proposing as the largest sum. And it actually looks really high, right? And it is actually really high because remember I said I was expecting numbers between 600 and 650, somewhere around there. This being 719 is actually extremely high, right? So we got 94, 98, 89. Yeah, like even the numbers that are below 50, like there's only two of them. And it's a 41 and 43. So this is, I would expect to be very, very high. Right, and if you look at the other ones, the other ones we tested, so 689, 655, so maybe closer to 650 than 600, but yeah, like anything around 650 or, or more is probably going to be is probably going to be the highest sum. Okay, so anyways, that is the solution to this. Now, now that we're done, though, we will just comment out the test code since we don't need that anymore. So I don't need starting index. Okay, and there we go. We have a complete code, and there are 11 common um, common methods that we use with uh, arrays. Now, like I said, we never actually just use any one of these on their own, but like just to do it. But typically, these are things that we do with arrays when we're using them. Anyways, please join me for other videos. Remember, if you if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you next video.